Hello friends, this video on motion and time part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we got a good idea about graphs and how do we draw graphs, how do we represent data in graphs. So let us now talk in detail about the distance time graphs because these distance time graphs are going to give us a lot of information about motion of various objects. So let's look at this example where we see this little boy is traveling from his home to McDonald's and then he is coming back from McDonald's to home. So when we try to represent it in a distance time graph where we take time on the x axis and distance on the y axis. Now the shape of the graph tells us a lot of things. Let's say if the graph is a straight line. So what does this graph tell? This graph tells that the object travels. Now, now let's say if uh, say the time is in hours and let's say the distance is in kilometers. So this tells us that the object travel any point of the any point on this line tells us the distance traveled in a particular time. So let's say we take this point. So this point on the graph tells us that in two hours, so this is two hours, this object traveled two kilometers, right? So that is what it tells us. So this point, similarly, if you take this point, so this point tells us, so you join these points. So this point tells us that in, this is 3.5. So in 3.5 hours, it tra the object traveled 3.5 kilometers. So any point on the uh, line actually gives you information about the distance traveled in a particular duration of time. So that is something which you can infer from the graph. So looking at the graph, you can also tell what kind of motion the object has, whether the object is moving uniformly or the object is not moving uniformly. So all those information can also be uh, derived looking at the distance time graph. Now, some of the interpretation from a distance time graph are the first interpretation is distance traveled at specific intervals of time. So that means any point of the graph will tell you how much distance is being traveled at a particular instant of time. As I was telling you, so at this point, you can tell that it traveled one kilometer in one hour. At this point, you can tell that it traveled two kilometers in two hours and so on. So you can actually tell how much distance distance has been traveled at specific intervals of time. So if I just give you this graph and if I tell you that uh, how much distance has been covered in, uh, in uh, say a time duration of three hours. So this is three hours. So this is three hours. So corresponding to three hours, this is the point. So for this point, what is the corresponding distance? That is three kilometers. So you would say that three kilometer is traveled in three hours. So each point represents how much distance traveled in how much time. So with that information, we can actually uh, tell us that when the car is moving, how much it has covered in how much time. Now, the second interpretation from a graph could be the distance traveled at a particular instant of time. Let's say if you talk about, so one thing is how much it traveled in two hours, right? So that is one thing. The another thing is how much it traveled at say the third hour, at the second hour. So if I tell you that how much distance it had traveled at a specific instant, at this instant of time, how much distance it had traveled. So you can very easily calculate corresponding to this, how much distance has been traveled. The another thing is if I tell you how much distance did it travel between two and three hours. So between these two, how much distance it had traveled. So for corresponding to two, let's say it has traveled this much distance corresponding to three, let's say it has traveled three kilometers. So that means basically in this much time duration, it has traveled this much, this much distance that is one kilometer. So basically it has traveled one kilometer between the second and the third hour. So all these calculations can also be done looking at the graph. So these calculations become easier. 
it also tells us about the speed of the vehicle and this is very interesting that is how fast the object is moving from one place to another and how do we find that looking at the graph so graphically now normally what do we know that speed is nothing but distance traveled per unit time so that is how we define speed right but how do we calculate speed looking at the graph now the slope of this line tells us the speed of the vehicle now what is slope slope is nothing but the steepness of this line how steep the line is so this line could have been something like this the line could also have been something like this the line could also have been something like this so how much slant the line is that decides the speed of the vehicle so that's the beauty of this distance time graph so let's see what do i mean by that so let's stick to the previous line that is the blue colored line so in this line let us say you assume uh, any particular point you consider any point let's say i have considered this point and i say that i want to find out the speed at this point so what would be the speed at this point so at this point how much is the distance traveled so the distance traveled is 2 kilometers for this point how much is the time taken the time taken is 2 hours so what would be the speed at point p it would be distance traveled divided by time taken so this is going to be 1 kilometer per hour so that would be the speed at point p so how did we calculate that is the y-axis divided by the x-axis and what is slope now what did I mean by slope slope is nothing but the slant of this line and slope is given by this divided by this that is slope so basically this is nothing but the distance traveled and this is nothing but the time taken correct so that is slope so slope is something like this slope of a line so slope would be like this let's say this is a straight line so the slope of if I ask you what is the slope of this line so the slope of this line is going to be this divided by this so that would be the slope of the line so if this is a this is b and this is o then slope is going to be a b by OB so that is how we define slope now if this line is more steep for example in this case so let's assume this case so in this case the slope would be something like this this distance divided by this distance so in this case you see the numerator is more therefore the value of the slope in this case would be more Correct. So let's say the slope for this is S1, slope for this is S2. So we will say that S2 will be greater than S1. But if you consider the slope of this line, so this would be this divided by this. Correct. So if you calculate the slope of this line, so this would come out to be less. So this slope would be less than S1. So if you want, you can actually uh, try calculating this and then you can see that yes, that is how it is. So as the uh, line becomes more and more steep, the slope increases and slope of the line is nothing but the speed of the vehicle. So that's how looking at the distance time graph, we can also calculate the speed of the vehicle. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.